You ever see one of these? Stylus gauge. And it's a very precision weight where you put the stylus down and then you can tell what kind of pressure is on your turntable. It makes this, is, this one's by Bosch. It's some pretty cool stuff. All right, anyway, sorry. Um, <coughs> Alexis in Paraguay writes to me and he says, Hi, Paul. I love your videos. Why, thank you, sir. Keep them coming. I'm going to do my best for you. Um, I have a question about preamps and their capability to control big audio amplifiers. Take, for example, those new big class D modules like your M1200 or maybe a 2000 watt version. How can I know that a certain preamplifier would be capable of controlling it and adjusting the volume in small enough intervals so that he can set the volume low enough to listen at night, for example? Is there a spec that I have to be aware in a preamplifier? Thank you, Alex. Yeah, actually there is, but it's more the spec that you'd want to look at is in the amplifier. So amplifiers, regardless of how many watts they put out, like, let's take our M1200. It puts out 1,200 watts into 4 ohm load. It'll put out 600 watts into an 8 ohm load, 1,200 watts into a 4 ohm load. That's Pardon my French, but that's a shit ton of shit ton of watts. And the question is, how much input voltage does it take to produce 1,200 watts? So when you look at your amplifier specs, look at its input voltage or its gain. Now ours are typically about 30 dB. So that means that for one volt in, you get 30 volts out, which isn't all that meaningful. So the one you want to look at is what's it take on the input to produce a full output wattage on your power amplifier. I'm not looking at the specs for our M1200, but I'm going to guess it's somewhere around 2 volts, 1.8, something like that. And, and you can look it up and see. Now, once you know that, and it's usually between one volt and two volts, that's normally kind of the range, because uh, most amps have about the same amount of gain. For X amount of volts in, you get X amount of volts out. Volts times amps equals watts, as we remember. So it's the output voltage going into a specific load with enough power behind the amplifier to create those watts that give us the sound that we hear on our loudspeakers. So back to the preamp question. Once you know that your amplifier falls into the very typical zone, which it likely does, let's say it takes two volts to come up to full wattage, that means your preamp has to put out at least two volts, <laughs> right? So what you want actually is probably something a bit higher. So I would want to have my preamp have at least twice the amount of voltage capability on its output than we're going to use. Because if you're going to, now, we're not going to run our amps up to 1200 watts, right? So we're probably not going to get anywhere near close to that. But you want to have that headroom in there. So let's say if you had a preamp that maximum output voltage was four volts or six volts. This is pretty typical. You're in great shape, okay? Totally great shape. So minimum, you need to be able to put on enough voltage on your preamplifier to drive your amplifier, and that is usually two volts or maybe a little less. And then you want some headroom. So four volts, six volts. So look for the maximum number of at the maximum output voltage of your preamp, make sure that that's at least twice the maximum input voltage of your power amp, and you should be good. Uh, the last little bit of his question, um, it, the number of steps between, I, I mean, you'll have to look that up. Some have a continuous volume control that's continuously variable from zero all the way up to 100. Some, like ours, goes up in half dB steps, which is plenty of resolution. So I don't think you're going to have a problem with that. All right. Thanks for the question. I'll talk to you tomorrow. <laughs> Take it easy.